there. We're going to talk today about HTML5 forms and I wanted to point out how important forms are for our everyday use. So every day we're using forms whether we're doing a simple Google Google search or logging into our bank account or our Facebook account, Twitter, anytime we're inputting information into a website or using it to search or click buttons, we're using forms. So form elements can include anything such as text box or buttons on websites. Um, anything that you're interacting with um, data or clicking buttons all include forms. So we're going to look at how to use HTML5 to create some simple forms today. And please note that forms can be very, very complex. And not, not only is it designing the form that is complex in terms of like laying out all the inputs that you want to have, but there's also using CSS to style a form so it looks good. And then validating the form, validating that the input that the user is, is inserting is in the format that you want, because that's a very big important of, of important function of being able to possibly store that data into a database and you don't want someone just to be able to put any information into your database. You want it to be in a particular format. Okay, so I have a uh, simple form that I started here. Um, the very first step, of course, is you want to have your HTML structure in here. So I've got my doc type, my HTML tags, my head tags, and my body along with a title HTML5 form example. Uh, the, before you start designing your form, you're going to want to put it inside of a form container. And that looks like this. It's the form tag. There are two attributes that you must include in your form tag. The first one is called it's called action and form action. That means what is the page that I want to send this data to? So usually you have a, an extra page that you're going to use that will process this information from the form. Sometimes, depending on what you're using, it could be the same page that we're working with. There might be some programming on the same page that will allow the form to process. Um, but for this simple example, we're just going to assume that we're going to pass this to a web page called formhandler.php. So in many cases what you're going to be doing is you're going to be passing your data onto a programming language that can handle working with that data. And in our example here, we're going to pass that onto a PHP page. Um, the second most important attribute is method. So there are two really popular methods for uh, working with data. One is called get. And get is basically what happens when you do a Google search. So let's say I'm searching for puppies for sale. And you'll notice up here in the URL, I'm sure you've noticed this sometimes, is you'll see this question mark and then you'll see a bunch of different things and you might see some information that you have previously put in. So here is my Q equals puppies for sale. So that's my query, right? And what they're doing here is they're storing puppies for sale to a, um, a variable called Q and that's what they've given the search box is called Q, right? Okay, so that comes up. A get method comes up in your website URL. So you want to be very careful only to use get when you're, you're using information that isn't very important or doesn't need to be secure. Um, it works really well for search engine keywords. It works really well for other things that you might be passing some some uh, simple information to. But when you're doing personal information, credit card information, any kind of things that can identify someone, you're going to want to use the post method. The post method is much more secure than the get method. Um, but in order for it to be uh, the utmost secure, you're going to want to have a security certificate which you can purchase uh, and have that associated with your website so that it's a secure connection and um, your data is even more protected. Okay, so this is our box right here, form handler 
app.php is where the information will go. And if I um, look at my page, because I don't have anything inside my form action or my form box, you won't see any information. Okay, so let's talk about some of the input types. There are many, many input types in HTML5, and we're going to talk about a few of the more common ones. The first one being input type equals text. Input type equals text will be able to store any text characters that you want to have in here. Um, so things like name, um, address, city, that sort of information can all be included here in text. And what you want to do is you want to specify the type equals text and then you want to give it a name. So let's say I want this to be someone's first name. So I can say name equals first name. There are many other attributes that I can include on here. Um, and you can see all these different things right here. I mean really there's quite a bit um, quite a bit in there, but the ones that I want to do, I want to do required. Uh, required tells the form that you don't process this form unless there's definitely input received in here. We're not passing it, you know, it has to be 10 characters in length. I mean, we can get really detailed about the types of things that we will accept in this, but if you just put required, at least it will make it so that they can't leave it blank. Okay, so that is your very minimum that you might want to have in your um, in your input. Now, let me save this and show you what this looks like. So we have our first name, and here is our little box. That's all it is. So we can, we what we want to do is we want to have some kind of information that says, hey, you need to fill this out, right? So we can do that two different ways. We can put in a label, and we can specify that it's for this particular uh, field and so we can say first name okay so we can do it that way and let me close that tag so you'll see when I refresh this page now you can see first name and then let me do this the last name and I'll show you another way this is the way that I generally like to do this so I've got input type equals text again, name equals last name, and then um, I'm going to use what's called the placeholder, and I'm going to write the name of the label in the placeholder. I'm going to put required on here as well. Once I save that, you'll see the difference. So this is using the label that's outside of the box and this is using the placeholder which comes inside the box. As you start typing you'll see that that label goes away. Um, in the first name box we don't have any information in here. So those are the two different ways. Some, some people um, have a preference one or the other but just pick one and stick with it for your entire form or use the placeholders you know for the areas that make sense to have them and use the labels where that makes sense. Now you'll notice if I input information I don't have any way to submit it. So that's the the next required element is you need an input type equals submit. And you can just you can just leave it like that input type equals submit and you will get a regular old submit button or you can change this to go or something fancy but make sure it makes sense right so you could you know if you had a search or something and you wanted to do go like Google does you know I mean they kind of have different names on their buttons so if you don't want it to say anything you can or you want it just to say submit you can have it say submit. Now watch when I go to click submit because I put that required in it's telling me that I need to put some information in here. Okay and then so once I put some information in here and click submit it will take it to this formhandler.php page which I haven't built yet but it will that's where it's going to send all the information to. Okay um, there's many other things that we can do um, we can we can use special input types and if you take a look at the, the variety here it doesn't look like it's coming up here uh, input type is equal email is uh, validates 
for c characters that have an at symbol in them. So that is something you might want to do required. Um, there are things like input type equals date and you can um, date of meeting can put something like that in. Um, what else do we have in here? Oh, let's put in the, a new one. It's not called input type, it's called text area. And text area allows us to enter like free form text. So I'm just going to put name equals comments. And of course all these things I'm going to want to put a label for. And we can always use a BR to create a line break so that these come up on a different different line. So let's see what we have here. A whole bunch of information here. Um, another thing that I can do is I can use paragraphs and divs and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and, and just put a div in here. And for my comments. And then I can always style these divs if I pass an ID in here. So maybe I say div ID equals comments. Save it. It'll push it down another line. Now this one I haven't put any any information in. So let's go ahead and put a placeholder. And you can do something like enter your email address. And then Let's do label something like that. Okay. So there's our meeting date, and if you click on the arrow, you'll get a, a uh, calendar that you can navigate through, or you can change change the year by clicking on it. See all the different years. There's my email address, and oh, where did my submit button go? My submit button does not appear to be on my page right now. So let me try things around a bit. Oh, it's because I did something wrong. I didn't close my text area box. So it was confusing everything. Alright, here we go. So there's my submit button. Now this is not a very well designed form by any means. Let me, uh, let me put that meeting date into a separate area as well. That will make it a little bit nicer here. Okay. All right, so here, if I click on submit, it's going to start at the top of the list and work through my inputs until I validate all of them. So I have to enter this information. Um, I've got a required thing on my email address. Notice as I start typing, it'll tell you, hey, it's missing the at sign. Um, here's my meeting date. I didn't put a required element on there, so that was just kind of if they wanted. And same thing with this. This is this is just uh, optional. Okay, so then once I get everything in, I can click submit. It'll take me to my form handler page. Now it's important that you name these fields with very specific um, field names because this is what your program will use to reference the values in here. So I always keep my uh, names for my fields all lowercase and I don't include any spaces because that way then I'll be able to reference them without having to have any problems um, referencing them. Okay, so this is the basis of how to create an HTML5 form. Um, just remember 
uh, to watch the next video to see how you might process that form information in PHP, which will require you to have a PHP web server. Okay, thanks. Bye.